In this video, we'll have a more in-depth analysis of Signals to Ethan and Lugia. Here's our very first Johto Master Fair coming to the game. He is flying Special Strike with two goals. So for stats, he has good HP, good special attack, good speed. Defense and special defense is a bit on the low side, so be careful of that. Bring some maybe defense with defense support to hopefully counter the low defense with defense. So for his passive, he has Jolo Spirit. It's a master passive, really good passive. Increases special attack for all allies. Also reduce special attack move damage taken from your opponent. Next passive is Extend Rage. This is a really good passive. It makes your moves AOE, which is really good. And can pair up with Aero Blast and Whirlpool. This is really good because it doesn't reduce damage when you hit like 2 or 3 targets. Usually if it's AOE move that does not have this passive, then your damage will reduce if you hit 2 or 3 opponents. And Aero Blast being AOE is some, it's really good because we barely have any flying moves that AOE. Other than like Air Cutter, right? Air Cutter is a weak move. Next passive, we have MP Brigade 9. This is a really good passive for him specifically because of his trainer move. His trainer move can apply special move up next effect, which is something very strong. One rank is 40% extra damage, and it can stack up to 10 ranks, which is 400% more damage, which is absolutely insane. We'll talk more about that later on. He has Brain Power as the third passive. Having a Nuke Multiplier in the passive is incredibly strong. We do need a bit of time to set up this, right? His X Special Attack, which is fine, I guess. So for his move, he has Aero Blast, 4 Gauge. Sadly, he has this critical hit slant more easily, so... His BP is reduced, which kinda sucks. He has X Special Attack, which is cool, can buff Special Attack. Whirlpool, which is fine as well. But since you have extend range, this becomes AoE and you can AoE trap your opponent, which is very very useful. He has something in a grid that increases damage if the target is trapped, which is very nice. Train a move, 50% chance to reduce him countdown, very good. Plus 1 accuracy, which is good, you can guarantee your plus 200% accuracy. Whirlpool to 99% accuracy with plus 1 accuracy. You can apply crit next, which is great as well, and then you can increase special move out next effect by Three ranks, which is very very good. The single move is Shining Soul, Aero Blast, regular single move. So the way you want to use him is to always use your trainer move. This is it. Before you use Aero Blast because of special move on next effect. 420% extra damage is pretty pretty good, right? Compared to just using Aero Blast again and again. Not only that, you also get crit hit next. So if you sync with him, your sync will always crit. Which is really really good and you don't even need to bring crit support and you don't really need to bring special attack support as well since you have mp regain 9 so you're gonna get back mp anyways but then again but then again if it's like a fast battle just bring like a quick special attack buffer that can just quickly buff your special attack so again this is it use arrow blast and then this is it arrow blast this is it arrow blast and then maybe you can sync in between because even with sync you can also regain the mp which is really really good which means that you can stack like plus 6 special move on next effect like for example you use this is it right before you sync and then after you sync you get back MP and then use this again so you use this 2 times in a row in between not in between like around the sync the sync turn right like before sync you use once after sync you use once again so that's plus 6 special move on next effect and then use arrow blast and that will do insane damage I will show damage calculations later, as always. So let's move on to the sync grid. And 1 out of 5, there's nothing much. Got some MGR, which is nice. But and honestly, 1 out of 5, Lugia is very, very good. His nuke and DPS are pretty solid at 1 out of 5. So if you plan to pull him, 1 out of 5 is fine. For like flying damage. 2 out of 5, you get some decent stuff. You get a uh, sync tau, 2 of them. You get flip fit 1, which is may be useful. reason I say it's pretty good is because unlike like other passive right, and stuff, this one is not one use only since you're gonna regain the MP so you're gonna use this again and again and use it 6 times you can buff your own speed and he has a 4 gauge move, pretty expensive. His speed is not too bad but like having some extra speed would be nice. You have foul fighting which is pretty good, this is pretty good and it's easy to set up, just use whirlpool, easy. Racing Rain 2, 
or if you plan to rain run a rain team with him which works as well you have mpr2 which is kind of whatever you have refreshing rain 1 which is also pretty nice as 3 out of 5 you get sync tinker 9 which is okay since it's not a one time use only it's every time you use a sync so getting like plus one special go out next effect which is pretty nice because like, because like i said previously you get plus six here right if you use before sync and after sync then you get another plus one so you've got plus seven which is going to be very strong interference sync five increasing damage if it's trapped confused or binge very very very, very easy to set up as well you have brawn you have brawn gain too this is also pretty good it's also not one time use which is great 30% chance and you're gonna use it again and again anyway so there's no way you're not getting this if you keep using this if you keep using the Trinomu Pogo 4 not bad as well his speed is okay like I said previously but being able to like get free move would be quite useful right so you don't have to eat out so much gauge okay shower power 3 which is good I guess if you want to run a rain team piercing case useful against evasion sync pairs healthy benefits 5 can be useful to tank some hits maybe grand entry 2 it's kind of eh since you're gonna you can max out your own special attack since you're gonna gain the mp anyways right so if it's like for gauntlet you don't need to take this honestly since you're gonna buff your own special attack anyways so i have five builds to show you guys all of them are kind of some of them are kind of similar to each other so it's nothing like it's not like drastically different or anything the first one is the nuke without rain so with this grid, take all the sync notes, take interference sync, and sync tinker 9 as well for some extra DPS. Even though this is a nick build, but like, yeah. Once you nuke, you're gonna issue the move, and then you're gonna use arrow plus again. So yeah, and with interference sync 5, easy to set up with Murpu as well, and it's AoE. So with this nuke with rain, so you take shower power 3 here, keeping, you also keep all the notes. Just make sure to bring rain support. In fact, sync as crease and sync as Ethan are gonna be pretty good pairing since Chris can summon rain, she can also buff special Mogalax effect, so that is very very nice. And they have the Joto um, Master Passive as well, so it's gonna be very very nice. Next time with DPS but without rain, this one probably the build you're gonna use most of the time because the DPS is insanely high. The, the arrow blast, the arrow blast hits so so hard. And I also took Bogo 4. You can sacrifice this and take something else if you want. You can take like special attack plus 20 or something. But like, it's just in case if you don't have speed support. Poco 4 is quite useful for the free move next effect. You also have 4, you also have four fighting for f which will trigger if you pinch Confuse Trap, which you can easily do with 4 pool. The fourth, the fourth one is DPS but in rain. This one is pretty much the same thing, but you just take refreshing rain 1 for some survivability if you want but I don't really find this very useful I would just prefer to run the previous grid the last one is a like a meme build whirlpool build take all the whirlpool power up refreshing rain you run him with rain obviously for extra damage with whirlpool for fighting tool brown gain tool I'll be using this once I get him tomorrow stay tuned for that video it's gonna be pretty fun probably so, time for the damage calculation. First one would be Flying Nuke with Signature Eaton and the other Flying Master Fair, any Steven, as well as a free Sync Pair, Kahili. Kahili has Crazy Nuke. Just want to say that first. But yeah, this is the grid I'll be using for the damage calculation. Interference for Eaton, we have Interference Sync 5 and Shower Power 3. For any Steven, we have Clear Sync Up 9, Clear Sync Up 5. For Kahili, we have Haymaker for the grid, as well as Super Preparation 4. So let's look at the damage. This is the damage. Brain power easy to set up. Everything is easy to set up. I guess maybe rain a bit difficult. You have to rely on another support. Steven also quite easy to set up with clear sync up 5 and 9. But damage sadly is low mainly because his attack stat is so bad. Kahili on the other hand has pretty good new for free support. Mainly because again, higher attack stat. Way higher than Steven, like two times higher than Steven actually. So yeah, that explains the difference. But Steven and Kahili can apply super effective up next, right? So this will be the damage. After you apply super effective up next, for Steven you use it for from the trainer move. Kahili also from trainer move and it's from the grid, right? The 50% chance to apply super effective up next effect after using the trainer move. 
So it's possible, I've tried that before. The nuke is satisfying. Good damage. Then again, if you use super effective armor support with Ethan, then it's obviously higher. But yeah, uh, Ethan and Kahili, good nuke. Steven, if without super effective armor, it's actually kind of bad nuke, sadly. And even with two multipliers, this is our 140% multiplier. Now let's compare DPS. Steven and Ethan is still there. This time we compare with Blue instead with Hurricane. So this is the grid. So for Ethan, we have 4 fighting 2 for some damage. We have Bronze gain 2 for some luck and some special move up next buff. Bogo 4 as well. For Steven, we have clear power up 1. Also, Fleet Fit 1 to activate his good form passive. For Blue, we only have Brutal Clarity. I didn't put Harry 5 because it's just not super consistent. If you have any Scala, it works, but if you don't, then yeah, I didn't include it. Now, the damage is here. On a clarify thing, something which is uh, most passive, it's only 20%, 10%. Could be higher, but I just assumed that no Johto or Ho and Simpair for your teammate. So, the damage, first glance, Ethan has the lowest. Whoa! Hurricane has higher, despite being only 3 gauge move. If you have a sharp eye, you probably already noticed. I didn't put any special move on X effect here. Now, let's put it there. Assume you plus 4. And look at the damage, it's insane. It's insane. Good damage, and it's AoE as well. Remember, it's AoE with extend range passive, so damage is not reduced if you hit two or three targets. So, we have four fighting two here, easy to set up trap. We have Steven assuming 24 stat buffs. My damage calculation is after you use your sync for the first time, so you only have one sync buff, right? So, it's to make things you know more consistent so things don't get very confusing. 24 stat buffs, it's doable. Right, he can easily buff his own defense with defense with Dragon Ascend. He can buff his own crit, just bring some other support. And yeah, busy. You. he also has the Fleet Fit 1 to buff speed with Dragon Ascend. You have Clear Power Up 1 typo here, but yeah, it's very little damage, but like, yeah, it's still extra damage. For Blue, Brutal Clarity plus 6, plus 6 accuracy. Sadly, Blue is not super self sufficient. He cannot max his max his own crit without MPR. He cannot max special attack with NPR as well. He also cannot max aggressive with NPR. So yeah, big source of vision, but blue is still not, not the best in pair. Now, this damage, 17.1k this damage. It's a bit unfair because Aeroblast takes two turns to charge up, right? Like you use train the move and then you attack. All the others you just keep spamming. So how do we how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna how are we gonna like compare them more properly I guess? We have to divide Ethan's damage by two because of two turns. It becomes A5 A2 per turn. So Steven becomes highest, Ethan becomes lowest again. And now we can start converting them to per gauge. Ethan and Steven, four gauge, right? Then blue, three gauge. And here is per gauge. Blue has the highest per gauge. Surprisingly, maybe to some of you, but yeah, for three gauge move, Hurricane from Blue is pretty strong, very very strong actually. Ethan on the lower side, but let's be real, does it even matter, <laughs> right? It's seventeen point one k hit per hit. We're gonna wipe the entire stage anyways, so it doesn't even matter if it has low gauge, right? Like literally, you gotta KO the stage anyways. Doesn't even matter. So this this one. It's just extra to show you guys its actual DPS and efficiency, I guess, if you want to call that. With per gauge efficiency, I guess. But yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna one shot everything, anyways. Just for extra info, I guess. And not only that, Ethan can still increase damage to 50% with Jealous Spirit. Steven can only increase up to 30%. So yeah, damage is gonna be higher again for Ethan. Now, this is not all. Let's assume we get to plus 8 special move next effect, which is doable. We can even get to plus 9 if you take the Sing Tinker 9 passive in the grid, right? So we get to plus 8, which means you have to activate Brawn gain 2 two times in a row, right? Before Sync and after Sync, like I said many times before. It's a 9% chance to do that, a bit low, but if you pull that off, the damage will become 26k per hit. That is Sync new level damage. And it's AoE. <laughs> yeah, that is very, very quite broken actually. Yeah, 
I'll be trying this tomorrow. In fact, I'll be trying plus 10 special one expect tomorrow. And it's gonna be insane. So yeah, stay tuned for that video. So should someone eaten and yeah. Typically I would say yes for Master Fair, but since we are getting three Master Fairs, I will need to divide that to yes and no. Yes, because they are strong new strong DPS. So you can trap as well. AoE trap AoE DPS. No, because you have Signal Sword Lyra and Signal Sword Crease as well, who are maybe arguably better than Ethan, because Lyra and Crease are more on the utility side, and utility are, and utility are usually more difficult to power creep, and it's more useful in the long term, from my experience, which is also why I always go for Zone Sing pairs, because they are very hard to power creep, right? It's gonna take a while before they repeat another zone. Another zone for the for the type we already have. The reason is we already have any Steven. Like the damage calculation I already showed, any Steven can still still work. Nuke is a bit on the low side, but like DPS is still pretty good, so it's fine. And if I'm being completely honest, in my opinion, Ethan compared to Lyra and Chris is lower value. Like I said previously, Lyra, Chris, utility, utility and stuff, right? Grassy terrain, brain dance and stuff. They are more useful. In my opinion, so yeah, if you really want to go meta, I would suggest you to go either Lyra or Chris, or maybe even both. And then once you get them, go back to Ethan. So yeah, if you plan to summon him, what move level should it be? Well, one or three out of five is fine. One you can just stop at one if you want. Good new and good DPS works just fine. If you want more new, more DPS, and if you want Bogo four or like the three fit one for trainer move, you can go for three out of five. Right, more damage is always nice to have. And also have some cage management for Ethan. So overall, he's a good master fair. Really, really good. 